I am in Charleston, West Virginia. It's an interesting city the way it's laid out. It's basically, uh, it's in a valley, a narrow valley, where you've got these, they probably call them mountains, so they're really just big hills on either side. And then you got some houses here, and you, what it widens, you got some houses on this side, a little bit farther this way. Anyway, I just wanted to relax by this river for a second. It's quite lovely. But now, it's time to head to downtown. Clearly, this is a more upscale part of town. Very nice homes up here. Real pretty neighborhood. But that being said, West Virginia is a poor state. It is the second poor state, in fact, right behind Mississippi. So um, I'm glad I'm seeing some of these neighborhoods here, but we uh, got off the freeway driving in about 50 miles out of uh, Charleston and kind of drove, you know, drove on a highway because you could see a lot more. And believe me, mostly what we saw was very, very poor neighborhoods, homes in very poor condition. So this morning when I read that this is the second poor state, it did not surprise me. All right, I am on McCorkle Avenue. This is a major thoroughfare through the city. Kind of give you an idea of what it looks like here. As I was saying, it's just, it's a narrow skinny city kind of in the shape of a snake, you know, so as it winds through these uh, hills here. You see the hills there, and the hills here, and the city's just uh, laid out in between them. Like I said, a long, skinny, snake-shaped uh, city. Really interesting. There's the capital. There you, <laughs> I knew I was coming up on it. There it is right there. The gold dome of it. But anyway, that means I'm getting very close to downtown. So I'm going to disembark there and get a drone shot, hopefully, and uh, see what it looks like down there. Right when I get here at the river, I see this. <laughs> this boat pushing a huge load of coal. At least I think that's coal. What do you think? Is that what that is? Coal? It's pushing it down the river. That is one of the bridges that crossed the river into the uh, main part of the city. The downtown part of the city. But how awesome, huh? I love this site. First thing I see when I get here. <laughs> but that is coal, I believe, and as everyone knows, well, most people know, West Virginia is a major coal uh, producer. One of the top in the country, if not the top. I wish I could have gotten the time to rush down there to get the shot of that boat. A little too late. A couple minutes too late. But, anyway, yeah. There's downtown. I'm going to uh, go explore it now. I am in the heart of downtown Charleston, West Virginia. It's pretty quiet. Checking out some of the uh, beautiful old buildings. And there's a lot of them. Very quiet. It is a, what, Friday late morning? There are virtually no people here. Um, but that would make sense because unfortunately, Charleston, lovely as it is so far, is a city in decline. 
It's been losing population every year for, oh, what, 60, 70 years? Uh, in 1960, it had a population of 85,800 people. That was it, it at its peak. And right now, the city's population is 44,600. So, it is losing people rapidly every year. See, I'm just like, this is like the center of downtown. <laughs> And there's nothing here. I'm in the middle of the street. Now, its metro area is declining too, unfortunately. Usually, or often in these core cities that lose population, Miami or Atlanta, for instance, still have booming uh, metro areas, but not Charleston. Charleston is losing population in its metro area as well. So... Yeah, it's not good. It's too bad because at least downtown is really nice. Lovely weather today. Nice day here in Charleston in mid-March. Um, supposed to get up in the 60s. Some sun. It's already pretty comfortable out here now. But we are supposed to get a snowstorm tomorrow, which is just great because we get back out on the road. Going to be putting the uh, Bronco to test. Driving through some uh, snowy conditions as we make our way to Richmond, Virginia. But today is all about Charleston. There's a lot of early uh, 1900s architecture here. That is grand and beautiful. So it's a damn shame that the city is declining like it is. Another thing I haven't seen is homeless. I've walked around quite a bit so far. Have not seen a single homeless person, nor have I seen any graffiti, defacement. You know, the stuff that's quite common uh, in a lot of other cities west coast cities and uh, down south but here in West Virginia it is very well maintained I mean clean and beautiful I'm gonna go ahead and go across the street it's not a big deal because there's virtually no traffic <laughs> more modern building there That one is really beautiful. I don't know if you can see it very well because unfortunately the sun is on the wrong side for filming. One of the newest buildings in the city, along with that one. But there are no construction cranes anywhere here, like you see in a lot of other cities. Always like to go down these because it kind of a harbinger or reflects on the city on how well they take uh, care of these kind of forgotten areas. Now like what I often see in these alleys, uh, interesting artwork. There is a mural here about the vision of Charleston, looks like. Low cost of living, green spaces, etc. As I go down the alley, it's clean. I need a little bit of trash. These are some of the oldest buildings in the city. Now there's kind of a rough spot. The homeless have encamped here, clearly. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. See all this really beautiful detail that you don't see on buildings anymore. I'm at the side of the building now. 14 stories built in 1911, or let's put it this way, it was finished in 1911. It took them years to build it. Two years to build it. Um, 
tallest building in West Virginia when completed and sadly now it just sets empty and this is downtown over here and as I was saying it's right on the banks of the Kanawha River All right, I'm on Pennsylvania Street, about a half mile out of downtown. See, look at all that, wow. Another little commercial district, almost like a little mini downtown, even though we're, I don't know, not even, like I said, not even a mile from the main city. Uh, the main city's downtown. I've crossed the Elk River. And uh, I'm just going to check out some of the uh, neighborhoods close in on the city. These are nice sized houses, most of them. I mean, they're like, I don't know, two stories. Pretty good sized houses. Got a green light, but this lady is uh, holding me up here. <laughs> but I want to head this way now. See what is up here. A lot of the city looks pretty nice. I, uh, I was told by someone that there's not really a super bad neighborhood or super nice neighborhood. That they're just kind of all co-mixed, uh, co mixed up. You can really kind of see that. All these houses built on hills. In its heyday, which I guess was in the mid-1900s, this was probably an, an amazing city. It's too bad that it's dying. But it is dying. See, I've just passed some really decrepit looking houses and then you'll see one like this. It's beautiful. But right next to it, not as good a shape. And next to that, literally falling apart. That's basically in a nutshell what the neighborhoods here in uh, Charleston look like. It's really fascinating if you think about it. I'm just kind of swinging the camera around so you can see this uh, residential area downtown is about two miles that way maybe maybe not even that I bet real estate here is not bad you know and you could take a house like this one which is boarded up both of them are actually this all oh, three of them here are but they're decent sized houses I mean, you could, you could do something with these. If you could get your neighbors to clean up their trash, which you see, it'd be really lovely here. I have to say that I am really fascinated by the neighborhoods here, the houses here in uh, Charleston. I mean, they're pretty nice. A lot of them are in disrepair, some of them aren't. It's a pretty good, it's not great, but it's not bad either. I mean, it looks like this everywhere. I've driven street after street after street. And, you know, you see a lot of this and in couple doors down an immaculate beautiful two-story it's fascinating really never seen a, a city with so much housing like this anyway um, the wife is about ready so I'm gonna go pick her up 
and we're going to go to the Capitol building. We are at the West Virginia State Capitol. And like all the other Capitol buildings, they have a Liberty Bell. There's no crack on this one. See, that's just silly. All right, we are finally in the front of the West Virginia Capitol building. It's pretty magnificent looking. It's big. It's got a big statue of Abraham Lincoln on the front. Abraham Lincoln created the state of West Virginia. I didn't know that, did you? No, I did not. West Virginia joined the Union 1863. So there you go. It's a state because of Abraham Lincoln. All right, we're gonna go head up the steps. It looks like this is gonna be one of those rare Capitol buildings where you can actually go in the front door. All right, this is the view from the steps of the Capitol building here in West Virginia. Standing underneath the huge pillars. And we're gonna walk in right now. See if there's security. You can't get in, I'm sorry, that way. You get in, you have to the Capitol. All right, we were just informed by some of the people who work here that we can't get in this way. We gotta go to the side. What do you say? I don't know. The lady said to visit her in her office, but she has a moving camera. Oh. I don't know if she was by that. All right, so, so off to the side we go. Oh. Yeah, anyway. There's gotta be security too, I think. But I don't see any security. Wow, we're just walking in. Um, if the police come and get us, we'll know. We broke the rules. That would seem fine. Okay, cool. I expected to see some uh, metal detectors and stuff like that, but I guess not. Yeah, this is the governor's office. State of West Virginia. Huh? Yeah, is this a picture of him? Hmm. All right, well, we won't go in and bother him. This is the first governor of West Virginia. Arthur Borman, 1863, who does he look like? Lincoln. Yeah, I thought it was Lincoln. So did I. It's like he's trying to look like Lincoln, isn't he? Hmm. We've reached the middle of the Capitol. Should be able to see the rotunda about now. There it is. West Virginia Capitol Rotunda. And the wife is over here. She's gonna get her Capitol passport stamped. Going it, West Virginia? I'm finding it. Give me a second. There we go. I found it. All right. All right. Thank understand. you. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, it's blurry. There it is. No, it's not. The West Virginia stamp. West Virginia. It's fine. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, we're up on the second floor. I'm gonna look down. Yeah, that's where we just was. Another look at the rotunda. That huge light fixture up there. It's giant. There's a walkway up there, I'm assuming. Yeah, I can see a doorway right there. I'm assuming we can't go up there though. Boo. Interesting, so yeah, I've always wondered why there's a Virginia and a West Virginia. It's because it all used to be Virginia, huh? Oh, yes, absolutely. And then uh, during the Civil War, West Virginia separated from Virginia. So Virginia jo uh, joined the Confederacy and West Virginia stayed with the Union. Huh, see, I did not know that. Yeah. All right, we're here in the museum, West Virginia State Museum. Well, we know West Virginia is a coal state. This is a huge chunk of coal. Weighs 4,000 pounds. It was used as a desk. And it was donated to this uh, museum. That's a huge chunk of coal. 4,000 pounds. What, that? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Yeah. Did you say it was used Big as a desk? Big ass piece of coal, huh? You say it was used as a desk? Used as a desk. All right, so uh, this cannon was used in the Civil War. Hmm. 
Well, it's got a sound effect. The 35th state. After four years of fighting and more than 600,000 deaths, Civil War produced only one permanent change. Wow. The creation of the state of West Virginia. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this museum. Showing the history of West Virginia. Now they're talking about the coal industry. The company's owned in 1900. The company store sold everything from some regimes to farming. Ah, it's just, this is a really cool museum. It's a good museum. All kinds of stuff in it. Of course, uh, we're in West Virginia, so there has to be mention of bootlegging. Okay, U.S. Senator Robert C. Byrd, longest serving senator in American history, West Virginia senator, also uh, was a skilled fiddler, appeared on the Grand Old Opry in Nashville, and on the TV show Hee Haw. Huh. He never lost an election and he cast his 18,000th vote in the U.S. Senate in 2007, the most of any senator in history. That's pretty amazing. All right, so here's the state seal. It was, it, what, there wasn't a state seal, or at least I couldn't find one in the uh, Capitol building, but here it is. No, I saw one. Did you? It's cool looking. I like that. Well, that was really cool. I liked it a lot. That was a great museum. Uh, we were wondering what was going on because in the Capitol building there was nothing, but this <laughs> museum is right ac across the way. Mm -hmm. You know, walking distance, mm -hmm. it takes five seconds to get here. And you learn a lot about the state yeah. here. And it's set up really nicely. Like you walk this timeline and it yeah. keeps telling you the years that you're at on the, on the ground. Yeah, this is one of the best state museums we've been to and it doesn't cost anything. Probably the best, well, I think it's the best one so far. Yeah, so good for you, West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, it's still beautiful here. It's about 60 degrees. But that's going to change tonight. There's a storm moving in. It's supposed to get down in the 20s. You're a storm moving in. Yeah, oh, and uh, four to six inches of snow. So complete turn around from what it is right now, which sucks. That's, that's we get to drive in the snow tomorrow. We get to drive in the snow tomorrow. Okay. But oh well, we'll be fine. You get to drive in the snow. I that's right. I get to drive in the snow. Bleh. Man, great, we get to drive in that.